Have you ever heard of the saying, keep it simple, stupid? Well, I guess I haven't either. Today's shot's gonna be a pretty easy one. Something for the good old portfolio that I think, you know, should be pretty epic. Okay, so the shot is of this drink, but from above, with the drink smack dab in the center of the table. That way I can capture this really cool light shadow reflection on the table from the hard light. Some brand new cool little lights. They come with a light dome, little mini softbox, Bowen's mount, reflector, kind of look like a little camera. Okay, so to light this drink shot or stop motion or video or whatever, I'm gonna be moving the light around the table. So I'm gonna be using these super small, lightweight Xeon X100s. They're battery powered, so it's perfect for this kind of action. Okay, well, that didn't work. Yeah, it's cool, but it's really not that unique. I've seen it before a ton of times. I just wanna, you know, I don't know. I just wanna add more to it. I hate this point. You know, I have this idea for a shot in my head. I do it and I review it. And then I just have this feeling of disappointment. You know, I guess for me, maybe this shot is a little bit too simple. You know, my brain, my imagination starts wanting to add more and more and more to it where I start thinking like, how can I make this different? You know, I've seen this a million times before. You know, how can I make it my own? Okay, maybe it starts off with a lime falling in super slow motion. It tumbles into the drink, splashes, then the light starts moving in a circle around the table. Then maybe the lights come in from different angles with different colors like once the lime falls it's party time or something like that i think that'll work to fake this super slow motion of this lime falling into this drink i'm going to use my head one here to rotate the lime around in a circle and then i'm going to do a stop motion or a time lapse basically of about 250 frames as it spins in a 360. now to light this lime i'm going to use these x100s one in the back on each side, kind of giving me some really beautiful side lighting, some nice reflections to make this look wet, and a front X100 here with a dome just to fill in the front of the lime. Okay, I wanna do a little test here just to see if this lime stop motion will work. So I have my stop motion here spinning around. It's about 250 stills. And I have one of those test images of the glass from the first shoot. Again, right now, I just want to see if this is all going to work before I go and film it again, since, you know, my idea has completely changed. So first, I'm going to take all these still images and make it one compound clip. I'll right click, select compound clip, and then I'll just name it limes. Then I'm going to speed up the entire clip to around 10 seconds because that's kind of what I originally shot the time lapse at. I'll just cut off the first bit of the clip here because I kind of want to start it right when the lime starts to move. Okay, now before I mask out that black background around the lime, I'm first going to get the motion correct. So I'll open up the retime curve. I want to give it that kind of super slow motion effect. So I'll scrub over to right about when the lime starts to rotate away from the camera. I'll place a keyframe there then move the line up to where it starts looking like it's falling in real time. Okay, now that that's looking pretty good, I'm gonna keyframe the size and the position of the lime as it falls. I'll increase the size so the lime fills the frame, and then I'm gonna scrub forward to right before it starts to rotate much faster, and decrease the size of the lime there. I can give that a play, and it's starting to look pretty good, like it's falling in slow motion, so I'll go to the end of the clip and decrease the size of the lime again, so it looks realistically like it would when it enters the glass. And now I have my lime falling in super slow motion, but I'll have to do this all over again. That way this clip matches up with that final shot, but this is just a test, so it doesn't really have to be perfect. Now to remove that black background, I'm gonna jump over to the color tab. I have my lime clip selected, 
and I'm gonna remove this background using what's called a magic mask. First, however, I wanna create a node over here. So I'll right click and select the alpha node. Then I'll connect my clip right here to that alpha node. So what we do next will be visible in the edit. Now I'll scrub forward a bit to get a good look at that line. You know, I want some of these white bits and some of these green bits. So now with my magic mask, I'm gonna click and draw on the whole line. Little side note, you wanna make sure that this plus eyedropper is selected and also that the make overlay is toggled on. But DaVinci does a pretty good job of selecting out that entire line. I'm gonna zoom in here, that way I can check my edges. I kinda like to cut into whatever I'm masking out just to make sure that that background gets removed as much as possible. So now with the shrink mode selected down here, I like to play around with the radius slider. You can kinda see how the mask moves in from the edges just a tad. And another little thing is I like to blur that out as well just to blend or feather that selection a bit. But once I have it where I kind of think it looks good, I'm gonna click on the track forward and backwards button and kind of just wait for DaVinci to do its thing. Okay, now it's finished and I can go back to the edit tab and kind of see how I did. I can see that this and, and this are still left. So to get rid of that, I can go back into the color tab to remove those with a typical keyframe mask. I'll press Alt P to create a parallel node right up here. Now to get it connected, I'll first remove the connection from the alpha node to the original clip and then attach the original clip to our parallel node and then connect the parallel node to the alpha node. I know it's a little complicated, but it'll become easier. A side note though, is that you can keep doing this to add separate masks if you want. Just keep connecting the parallel nodes together and the final one you would connect to the alpha node. Now, once I have this all set up, I'll click on the connector to keyframe button down here. That way it'll track all of the movements going forward. So to create my mask, I'll go over to my pen tool in the windows tab and I'll click on invert this mask. Then I'll start drawing my mask to remove this selection from my lime shot. As I scroll through the clip, I'll keep moving that mask over, which will create new keyframes. And once I'm entirely finished with that spot, it'll be all gone. So at this point, I would probably add another keyframe mask to remove this, but I think I'll save that for later when I wanna put these two shots, these two final shots together. There's a ton of tutorials already about faking slow motion with video, but this is my kind of down and dirty stop motion version in DaVinci Resolve. This was supposed to be an easy shot. I guess if I'm thinking about this, there's probably a good chance that some of you are thinking about this as well, but oftentimes when I, I make a photo, I look on the computer or the back of my camera and I'm just not satisfied. I don't feel that rush like I usually do. I mean you know it rocks because you feel it right away. But with this video, and a, a lot of shots actually, I, I see it and I'm just not satisfied. I, I wanna do more, I wanna crank it up to 11. And pretty soon my simple shot turns into something just so much more complicated, so much bigger than it originally was. And I constantly feel like I'm falling into that trap where I try to do too much and I end up with nothing. Hopefully though, this is not that time. Okay, so I'm back to the original composition that I had before, but this time I'm filming with my black magic in 120 frames per second to capture the perfect splash into the drink as the lime falls in and the liquid goes over the brim. Hopefully I get it right the very first time in the, the perfect spot that I want it to be in. Otherwise, there's gonna be a lot of cleanup in between, but I have my light set here on a light stand pointed that way, completely random to start off with. I just wanna get that initial composition and then I'll move the light around the table to get that final shot. Okay, so I believe I got a, a pretty nice splash shot. I'm not 100% sold on it, but it looked good in camera. So the only thing left to do to make this final shot look like a GIF is to record one more time, but this time move the light around the table. Okay, so I'm gonna do the drop one more time. I did a little preliminary edit and I'm just not really happy with where it lined up. So I'm gonna try again, drop it, move the light around. Here we go. Funny thing 
is, is that my agent for my photography biz actually sent me over a mood board about five years ago containing a ton of images and samples that he thought I should make for my portfolio. And this shot, well, the first version of this shot with the light going around the drink was one of them. It, it stuck out to me then and I've been thinking about it ever since. I just couldn't really figure out how to make it my own. If I started this five years ago, I don't think it would really be the same. You know, a lot of things had to fall into place. My agent had to send me over that mood board, which originally inspired me, I guess. Uh, you know, I had to watch some tutorials on faking slow motion, which added that piece to this puzzle. Scott over at Tin House Studio had to create his version, which put it in my brain again. I guess the lesson here is really that easy shot is never really that easy. Man, I need some more coffee.